Hey, it's Jag from A Skylight Drive, and you're watching my episode of Cooking at 65 miles per hour. The dish I'm going to show you guys how to make is a beef and broccoli stir-fry. So I'm going to show you the variations of making it on tour versus at home where you have a stove and a skillet and such, where on the road sometimes all you've got is a trusty George Foreman and a microwave. So as for the ingredients to my stir-fry, go with a simple steam fresh broccoli, 97 slash 3% extra lean ground beef. And then I like to do a variety of different sauces so that I don't have the same thing every time. I actually eat this meal at some point every day. We've got a stir fry sauce of a choy. There is a orange ginger, this one's awesome. And then there's a teriyaki. Sometimes I'll even mix them, get a really nice flavor out of it. Sriracha to top it all off. If you're not putting this on there, then you're just doing something wrong. I always start with my broccoli, throw it up in the microwave five minutes. We'll just leave that going while we're getting the other stuff prepped. Oh, hold on, the plate's off. This is what happens on the road. Life of luxury. There we go. On the RV, on the road, I mean anywhere, it's going to be a little different. So we can't run both the foreman and the microwave at, at the same time. So I can't cook the beef at the same time as the broccoli. But next, what I do, because I am extremely anal and I follow a very strict meal plan, I actually weigh out my beef and I weigh out the broccoli as well so that I eat the exact same portion every single time I eat it. I grab a plate here. I've also got food scale. I scoop some beef on there until I hit my required amount. I do 75 grams, by the way. And as a reminder, it's extra lean ground beef. So the microwave just got done, so I'm gonna pull the broccoli out, weigh out my portion. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the foreman in so this is heating up. Watch your fingers, kitties. You don't wanna get burnt. I do like 200 grams. Like some days I'll mix it up and I'll make like a shake. I'll do like 100 grams of broccoli like in a banana if I don't feel like eating this much of it at night. All right, so the foreman is all heated up. We waited for it. The light clicked off, so it's all ready to start cooking the beef. One big thing is make sure that you always remember your grease trap. If you do that on the road and you don't have a grease trap, you're going to have that crap everywhere, and your van's not going to be happy with you. I'm not going to be happy with you. So you just do that, close it, and then just check on it from time to time. Cook it to the whatever intensity you want, whether it's rare, medium rare, medium, medium well, well done. I'd go for probably medium since it's since it's like store-bought meat. I go through, you know, one packet in like a week. So once it starts nearing the end of the week, I don't really want to go too rare with that. Maybe the first day I'll go a little more, a little more pink, but throughout the week I get a little more careful with it. Man, I bought this meat probably four or five days ago. Usually once it hits a week is when it's done. These cases actually really help. A lot of people will use like Ziploc bags. By this point, the meat would have been bad, but these screw on tops really, really preserve the freshness, especially, I mean, at home or on tour. It's looking pretty good on the outside, but see, you gotta be a little careful with the inside. Break it up a little bit and cook some of those rare spots. So uh, you may have noticed I'm using all paper plates, all plastic, that's how it goes on the road. You know, you don't bring out you know, metal silverware that you have to clean constantly. You just need something quick and easy that you dispose of and uh, something trusty. I mean, like, that's one of uh, the big differences from, from home to the road. The other is that a lot of this stuff I would just be cooking together in a skillet. Since we're on the road, I only have two tools here. I mean, even at home, sometimes I'll throw in mushrooms, garlic, I'll make it a little crazier, but I gotta make do with what I have. Let's check on the meat again. Go. It's actually looking pretty done. One thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to use the same plate again. Don't ever put cooked meat on a plate that had raw meat. It's a bad move. So there's my beef. Turn this off so nobody burns themselves. Now just as simple as dumping the beef in. From here is when you can choose from your plethora of sauces. I'm going to go with the stir fry sauces. Go crazy with it. Try anything. I know I'm not putting in more than two tablespoons. Get a little bit of sriracha over it as well. Not too much because this stuff is already pretty spicy. That is pretty much that. This is the stir fry. And then just sit down and enjoy your food. Stir it all up and tastes good. <laughs> Thank you for watching my episode of cooking at 65 miles per hour. Please come back and see other episodes. It's going to be awesome. Please go pick up our new album Rise. It came out September 23rd. We hope to see you guys out on the road.